Vitamin A is an essential vitamin which is also a fat soluble vitamin. It is essential because the vitamin A needs to be intaken through diet. Fat soluble vitamins are basically absorbed through fats and are also the only vitamins which can be stored in the body. Other fat soluble vitamins include D, E and K. Now, causes of deficiency of vitamin A are first is the undernutrition or lack of nutrition which is generally seen in the developing countries or because of poverty. Second are acute or chronic infections. Uh, generally seen in children. Third and the most important being malabsorption. Malabsorption of generally fats as vitamin A is a fat soluble vitamin. Malabsorption may also be caused due to various further diseases. Malabsorption then being the secondary cause. The primary other causes are First is the colitis, which is inflammation of colon. Second is Crohn's disease, which is also a type of inflammatory bowel disease. And the third is celiac disease. Now, what is celiac disease? Celiac disease is an autoimmune disorder in which Antibodies are formed against the gluten. Gluten is a type of protein which is present in the wheat or barley. So these individuals are resistant to eating the wheat or barley products as whenever they eat gluten, antibodies are formed, autoimmune reaction takes place resulting in the inflammation of small and large intestine and thus impairing the absorption. There are some other causes which are Therapeutic in nature. Therapeutic causes are those causes which are induced by a procedure or medication which is intended to treat some other disease but as an adverse effect causes deficiency of vitamin A or malabsorption of vitamin A. Uh, one is bariatric surgery. Bariatric surgery is a surgery performed to reduce the obesity or fat content um, performed generally in major two ways one being the resection of stomach or reduction in the size of stomach or by gastric bypass second is the use of mineral oils as laxative for the treatment of constipation now what this mineral oil does is they lubricate the walls of the GIT and hence enhancing the passage of food thereby decreasing their digestion and absorption which results again in malabsorption. The manifestations of the vitamin A deficiency are first and most important being the impaired vision. Now Impairment of vision is generally in the reduced light and is called as, yes, you guessed it right, night blindness. Now, vitamin A, also known as retinol, is an important component of a pigment known as rhodopsin. Now, this, this rhodopsin is located in the rods of the retina and these rods are the neurons which are responsible for vision in dim light. Now, now obviously if vitamin A is sufficient, rhodopsin would be formed less thereby rods or the neurons will suffer resulting in the night blindness or impaired vision in dim light. Second important 
manifestation of vitamin A deficiency is epithelial metaplasia and keratinization. Now, metaplasia means transformation of one type of epithelium into another abnormal type or non-useful type of epithelium and keratinization means deposition of keratin protein where they are not required. There are various sites where epithelial metaplasia and keratinization occurs of which important is the ocular epithelium. Epithelial metaplasia in eyes causes dryness which is called xeropthalmia and this is the most devastating consequence of vitamin A deficiency in eyes. Now these dry eyes leads to the deposition of keratin debris which appears as the small opaque spots over the cornea and these are called bitots spots um, which appear like this. Now these keratin debris and bitot spot resulting roughening of the corneal surface which ultimately results in erosion of the cornea and resulting in corneal ulcer. Roughening of the corneal surface which ultimately results in erosion of the cornea and is called keratomalacia. Now if this progresses or is not treated by supplementation of vitamin A, this might lead to permanent blindness. Now another epithelium which is affected is the epithelium of respiratory tract. or to be more precise, upper respiratory tract. The mucociliary epithelium of the airways is lost, which results in the secondary pulmonary infections. As the mucociliary epithelium prevents the influx of the pathogens inside the lungs by a constant upward motion of the cilia and mucus being sticky, which adheres to the pathogens or the infectious agents and does not allow them to go inside the lungs. If that is lost, secondary pulmonary infections occurs like pneumonia. Third epithelium which is affected is the urinary tract. Here, desquamation or loss of squamous tissue and deposition of the keratin debris leads to the formation of renal stones or stones present in the urinary tract. These keratin debris may also form stones in the urinary bladder. Another important manifestation or the later manifestation is immune deficiency. As vitamin A is also an antioxidant vitamin, it is responsible for the formation of immune products inside our body and deficient vitamin A might result in immune deficiency which might lead to certain diseases like measles pneumonia and diarrhea. All these immune deficient reactions result in increased mortality.
vitamin E deficiency also results in hyperplasia or hyper keratization of the epidermis now what is hyperplasia hyperplasia is the increase in the size of cell this resultant increase in the size of cells of epidermis causes plugging of the adnexal glands adnexal glands are the glands of the connective tissue of the epidermis now these plugged adnexal glands because of their secretions continuously grow and produce follicular and papular dermatosis that's all about vitamin a deficiency thanks for watching